Is there a rational argument that can stop evolutionary theory in its tracks? Hello, Ronnie Bullock here, founder of Creation Reformation and your host for today's video where I intend to do just that. If you are an evolutionist, don't click away. I want to hear from you if you believe that I am wrong. You can reach me at the email address below. This email goes to me and me alone, and I will respond personally. In fact, this is the third version of this very video because I have been contacted by knowledgeable evolutionists who convinced me that I needed to tweak certain arguments, which I've done. Maybe you can be the next. Let's go. At Creation Reformation, we assert and defend a statement that we call the natural selection paradox, and here it is. Every current living thing evolved from a first life form solely by cumulative random evolutionary change. Now, if you ponder that statement for a few moments, you will realize that if this is a true statement, then it completely destroys the theory of evolution by natural selection as a scientific explanation for all current living things. And I am asserting that this must be a true statement if the theory of evolution is true. That is, if the theory of evolution by natural selection is the true account for all current living things, then this statement must be true. But this statement cannot be defended scientifically, thus the paradox, the natural selection paradox, because despite natural selection's role in nature, this statement must be true. Now, we are presenting the natural selection paradox in this video as the silver bullet. If you would like a full explanation for how we derive the natural selection paradox, I invite you to go to our YouTube channel and you can find these two videos. In these videos, we give a full logical explanation for how we derive the natural selection paradox, why it must be true if evolutionary theory is true, and the implication to evolutionary theory, which is, of course, devastation. Now, let's talk about necessary evolutionary change. Necessary evolutionary change is the change that the theory of evolution must explain if it can explain all current living things. And we can start with this little diagram right here. I call this an icon of evolution, and I'm not trying to make a fact statement with this diagram. It's just a convenient diagram that we are all familiar with that can illustrate necessary evolutionary change. So, for example, evolution uh, purports to explain how something back then, whatever it was, evolved over time to be something now. And in this example, it's a human being. But what the theory of evolution must explain in this case is how a human being got a genotype, the coded building instructions inside to build the phenotype of a human being, the thing built by these coded instructions. The theory of evolution must explain how this genotype to build this phenotype evolved over time from a very different genotype and a very different phenotype. So when we talk about necessary evolutionary change, we are talking about the change of genotypes over time that each one produces its uh, corresponding phenotype. So evolution purports to explain, for example, that sometime back then there was this organism and it was what it was as a phenotype because it had a genotype, genetic coded building instructions to build it. And this genetic code of building instructions changed over time to a different set of coded building instructions to build a different phenotype here and on down the line, you get the idea. But it's not just this little progression that evolutionary theory must explain as necessary evolutionary change. It's this progression that must be explained. Evolutionary theory purports to explain how from some first life form or an early life form back then, in a continuous unbroken chain of organisms in descent with modification, we arrived at today and every organism today, which lies at the end of this ancestral descent of continuous organisms all the way back to some first living thing. And it's not just humans, as we've shown here, the theory of evolution purports to explain how every current living thing today lies at the end of a continuous line of descent with modification an unbroken chain of evolved organisms all the way back to this same first living thing. So what the theory of evolution, the necessary evolution that must be explained by evolutionary theory is this progression. And of course, these are the phenotypes. Each one of these has a corresponding genotype. So the necessary evolutionary change that evolutionary theory must explain is this progression of evolution of genotypes and their corresponding phenotypes. Now, again, let me just stress what the theory of evolution purports to explain is how the genetic code of building instructions that built this thing back here changed over time to become a very different set of coded building instructions to build a very different organism and on down the line all the way to every current living thing today. And this is an unbroken chain of descent. OK, now this idea seems strange to you. If it seems odd to you and you've never considered that if evolutionary theory is true, you as an organism today and every current living thing today can trace their evolution ancestral lineage and an unbroken chain of organisms all the way back to this first living thing, I assure you that this is not
not an unusual thought in evolutionary theory. In fact, it's a fact that must be true if evolutionary theory is true. And evolutionists often uh, show this fact in what they call phylogenetic trees. And here is an example of one. What phylogenetic trees attempt to show is some organization to how every current living thing today can trace its evolutionary lineage and an unbroken path all the way back to some first living thing, just as we described earlier. Now, this phylogenetic tree only goes up to the domain level, but of course, here are animals, and we could extend this out, of course, to every current living thing today, including you and giraffes and octopus and birds, okay? And the idea is that every organism today exists at the end, at the, say, the end of a twig or branch of this phylogenetic tree, but everyone can trace this unbroken path all the way back to some first living thing. So if we take uh, you, for example, as a current living thing right here, we can see that there is an unbroken ancestral lineage of organisms that started here at a first living thing and in a continuous parent to offspring replication came all the way out to the end of this line, which is you. Now, if we put these diagrams up here, uh, here is the diagram that uh, we made, and then this is just a representative a phylogenetic tree. Both of these diagrams are showing the same thing. If we take this fact of evolutionary theory showing necessary evolutionary change, we can uh, make five propositional statements that must be true also in light of the fact these diagrams are illustrating. So we are going to make five propositional statements, the fifth of which will be the natural selection paradox. So let's go. In view of these diagrams, we can make this statement. The only source for new phenotypes on Earth is random genetic variation that arrives in nature as new genotypes inside offspring. Now, there's a lot of words there. I've tried to make it as concise as possible. But if we understand that every phenotype in this continuous unbroken chain of organisms from a first living thing to, say, you, if every one of these was what it was because it had a genotype that built it, we can understand that, it, that the only source for these new phenotypes on Earth is random genetic variation that arrives in nature as these new genotypes. Every new genotype along this line was produced by random variation from the previous one. It was random genetic mutation or random variation of some other kind, but it was random. Much of it was what is called vertical gene transfer. This is random genetic mutations and variation passed to offspring during reproduction. There is also something called horizontal gene transfer, which is random, but probabilistically constrained. That's just for the uh, nerds out there. You can look that up later. But these are changes to existing and parent and previous genotypes. But the point is that the only source for anything new in nature that will cause any progress on this line from this first living thing to continue out, the only thing that makes this line continue is new phenotypes on Earth, and they are produced by new genotypes that come inside offspring, and these new genotypes are produced randomly. This is extremely important for you to understand. We're going to move on. We're only going to note here that these new phenotypes arrive on Earth either fit and adapted to their environment or not. Okay, that's pretty standard evolutionary theory there. Let's move on to number two. Statement number two, natural selection does not modify genotypes or phenotypes. It only eliminates some of the phenotypes in populations, but preserves others to survive. This is very important for us to understand. Because there is a notion out there that natural selection does something to modify organisms that already exist in nature. For example, in the popular peppered moth, moth example in England, there is this notion that natural selection did something to change light colored moths into dark colored moths, and that is simply not true. All natural selection did is remove light colored moths from the population, eliminating some of the phenotypes, the light colored moths, and it preserved dark colored moths to survive so that over time there were more dark colored moths in the population. But the point is that natural selection does not modify genotypes or phenotypes. It doesn't change them. It doesn't adapt them. It does nothing but eliminate some and preserve others to survive. So we understand natural selection to be the mechanism in nature that explains why some organisms survive and reproduce and some do not. Let's move on to number three. Every current living thing is a phenotype. You as an organism on earth today are a phenotype that exists at the end of an unbroken chain of survivors from a first living thing. Let's look at this diagram up here. Let's say that's you. You exist at the end of the twigs and branches of this phylogenetic tree as at the end of the line of an unbroken chain of survivors. Everybody on this line, every organism that populates this line was by definition a survivor. That should be evident with a little bit of thought. Let's move on to number four. Every organism in the chain of descent, so every organism that populates this line in the chain of descent leading to every current living thing, including you, 
survived and reproduced despite natural selection and removing other organisms. You may want to pause on this and just consider this for a few moments because it's very important. Natural selection is working in both of these diagrams. Natural selection is working in this diagram. Natural selection is working in this diagram. But what natural selection is doing is eliminating some of the phenotypes in populations, but none of the phenotypes that are on this line. Natural selection is removing phenotypes, some to extinction, off of this line, off of this line. It absolutely has no effect to change or modify, as we say, genotypes or phenotypes that are on this line. So every one of the organisms that populate this line, they survive and reproduce not because of natural selection, but despite natural selection, removing other organisms that are obviously off this line. Okay, that brings us to number five. And of course, we can uh, take these four statements as foundational statements to arrive at number five. Despite natural selection's role in nature, despite natural selection removing organisms off this line, every current living thing up here evolved from this first life form solely by cumulative random evolutionary change. The only evolutionary change that produced a new genotype from a previous genotype on this line is random, random evolutionary change. That's our propositional statement number one here. The only way anything new comes in nature, the only way this line progresses from say this genotype to this genotype, to move from this phenotype to this phenotype, and of course there's many uh, gradual changes in between. These, these, are, uh, these are just representative changes. But the only change that explains that is random genetic change. So look at the statement again, and we will recognize this as the natural selection paradox. Despite natural selection's role in nature, every current living thing evolved from a first life form solely by cumulative random evolutionary change. So there you have it, the silver bullet. Why is this a silver bullet? Because we have seen, I have just shown, that this statement must be a true statement if evolutionary theory is true. But this statement cannot be scientifically defended. This statement, in fact, if you just consider it for a few moments, is scientifically absurd. And because it is absurd and not scientifically defendable, but must be true, if evolutionary theory is true, it is paradoxically a destruction of the theory itself. So I would leave you with this. First, if you think that I am wrong on any of these five statements, you can contact me at the email address I provided before, and I believe I will provide again. Let me know how I am wrong on any of these statements. But if you cannot show that any of these propositional statements are false, and if you cannot show that this fifth statement, the natural selection paradox, is false, then you, if you continue to believe the theory of evolution by natural selection explains your existence, you are not believing based on a scientific theory. You are believing based on a faith belief. You may even be believing in magic. But in, in any event, because this statement must be true, it paradoxically destroys the theory of evolution as a scientific explanation for all current living things. And for those who see that, I hope you will join me in rejecting evolutionary theory as an explanation for your existence. So here you can find more information at naturalselectionparadox.com. Again, feel free to reach me at this email address and I will respond personally. But at this time, I will say goodbye and good day.